Hi everybody. March 15, 2019. I have posted many videos on Trump. I have a Trump playlist showing. Showing anybody who is interested in watching and listening. Showing them that this guy is just like the last guy. You know, it really is... Uh, not so much about Trump now. It's about Americans who just so want to live their delusion that we have a country. Uh, it's somewhat understandable with those who are choosing willful ignorance. It's far less understandable with those who are quote unquote awake, all of us on the same page during the Obama years. Trump comes into office and suddenly we have a huge majority of those who are quote unquote awake jumping right into the matrix supporting a guy that shows you every single day he's playing you for a fool. So these videos now that I post on Trump it's it's not about Trump it's about Americans who can't give up the lie I'm sure a lot of Trump supporters were like, yay, 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 you are going to veto a bill because you know that our border wall is so important to protect Americans. Right. You're going to veto this bill. I just want to play a few minutes of this. Prime Minister, that the United States is with them all the way. 100% whatever they need. This is New Zealand, the mosque shooting that killed a lot of people. And New Zealand now has already come out with new gun laws. <laughs> yes, we're all in this together. We will be there. New Zealand has been a great friend and partner for many years. Our relationship has never been better. And what they're going through is absolutely terrible. So our hearts are with them and whatever we can do. We're grateful to be joined today by the Vice President. Thank you very much, Mike, for being here. Members of my cabinet, devoted public servants, and angel parents, very important people to me and to a lot of other people. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you gone through a lot as we take action to restore our national sovereignty and defend this nation from criminal court. National sovereignty? Our nation was handed over to the United Nations. This guy is absolutely a puppet. He's the CEO who is running the corporation and he is running it into the ground. But just like Obama, Trump speaks the pretty words to, uh, yeah. Haven't you had friends or family members that speak the pretty words and then you see them go off and they don't live the words that they speak? This is what this guy has been doing for, well, ever since he came into office. Oh no, he did that during his campaign years. Oh, no, he was doing that. It, how can you not see this guy as just a liar? I don't understand how quote-unquote awake people are still supporting this guy. Cartels, human traffickers, and drug smugglers crime of all kinds coming through our southern border and other places but this is the place this is the place we have the biggest problem by far and i want to also compliment the incredible people at border patrol and ice and law enforcement for the job they've done they've apprehended so many thousands and thousands of people that if we had the proper protection we wouldn't even have to apprehend they wouldn't be coming in as president, the protection of the nation is my highest duty. Yesterday. 
And that's why he's going to war with Venezuela, and that's why he's dropping bombs on other countries. And, oh, wait until I show you the latest information about what this guy is doing. Oh, my God. You know, what, what really um, leaves me baffled, speechless, like, hey, this is so obvious, <sighs> is because it's so obvious. And you wonder... You wonder about people, you know, they so need a savior. Whether it's Jesus, whether it's Trump, they just need someone to fix the problems instead of getting involved themselves. And then they, they put all of their faith into a psychopath who's destroying them. What does that sound like? It sounds like a traumatized child who needs to believe daddy is real, that daddy is good, daddy is going to fix the problems. Just, just wait and, you know, sit back. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. He's going to fix the problems. He lies to you all the time. He lies to his children all the time. He goes off and does things that actually make you less secure you only become more and more traumatized or you, but, but you have to believe you've got to believe because your survival is dependent upon daddy that's that is pretty much the American people today the majority of the American people are traumatized children who are kind of like in a trauma bond with those that traumatize them. The Congress passed a dangerous resolution that if signed into law would put countless Americans in danger, very grave danger. The Democrat-sponsored resolution would terminate vital border security operations by revoking the national emergency issued last month. It is definitely a national emergency. Rarely have we had such a national emergency. Therefore, to defend the safety and security of all Americans, I will be signing and issuing a formal veto of this reckless resolution, and that's what it was. And I have to, in particular, thank the Republic. Okay, you can listen to it. It's two hours and 39 minutes long. Yes, he's protecting you, and he's going to veto the resolution to um, stop the Trump national emergency to get that wall, get that wall up. And, well, look at what he is doing. Slashing social programs, more money for war, Trump's dystopian budget proposal. It's all about funding greater militarism and belligerence along with serving corporate interests and high net worth households while gutting vital social programs. He cares so much about Americans who are hurting that he's cutting the, the, the social net for more spending on war. It's a proposal only Wall Street, the military, industrial security complex, big oil, and moneyed interest could love. Totaling $4.75 trillion, Trump wants an increase, another increase, $34 billion in war spending. Washington's only enemies are invented ones, and we know that. He has increased the budget of the Pentagon uh, each year. Now he's increasing it even more. We don't have enemies. We are the enemy of the world. He wants 8.6 billion more for wall construction along the southern border with Mexico. He's slashing Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, housing assistance, student loans, and other essential social programs, along with big cuts in environmental protection programs. He wants 1.5 trillion cut from Medicaid spending in the next decade. 
845 million less for Medicare, 25 billion from Social Security and Disability, a 9% reduction in non-defense spending across the board. The totals for the cuts, 220 billion less for food stamps, 21 billion from temporary assistance for needy families, 207 billion less for student loans, along with billions more cut for housing assistance and other social programs. Now, a lot of, a lot of you who, who have not suffered any of the consequences of our economy are weather warfare, all of the poisons coming down with very serious medical conditions that dump you into a whole new financial class, you may be thinking, this is great. This is great. Good. Because all of those people, they're just moochers. They're lazy. They don't want to work. That is such horse shit. That might have worked decades ago. It doesn't work today when we have millions upon millions upon millions of Americans suffering the consequences of what is taking place. And for awake people to be saying this is really frightening. And you do need to take a look at these judgments that you make. You still comfortable. Wait until you're not and then find out how many external forces operate to keep you just barely surviving. February 2017, during his first address to a joint congressional session, Trump pledged no changes to Social Security and Medicare. He said, America must put its own citizens first. Above all else, we will keep our promises to the American people. Our obligation is to serve, protect, and defend the citizens of the United States. He broke virtually every positive promise made to ordinary Americans, serving moneyed interests exclusively. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Uh, each of the past two Trump budgets has targeted benefits and services for individuals and families of modest means for deep cuts, even as it has supported tax cuts, conferring large new benefits on those at the top of the income scale. If this budget is enacted, these cuts would have increased poverty and hardship, leaving more Americans struggling to afford basics like food and rent. The type of society Trump and hardline ideologues in his regime favor is all about serving privileged interests exclusively, wanting ordinary Americans left on their own, sink or swim. Social safety net spending abolished in their ideal world. Okay? I have many videos on my Trump playlist showing that this guy is destroying ordinary Americans and he is working for the military industrial complex along with Wall Street. So, oh great, yes he knows how important that wall is. Get it done. I'm gonna veto this. You are being played Democrats, Republican. This is what happens. You know, look at Pelosi coming out and saying, well, you know, forget about impeachment. Uh, he's not worth it. He's not worth it. He's not worth it? Excuse me? Well, you have to, you know, commit some kind of um, crime or treason or something. Two years we've been listening to this impeachment crap. Pelosi comes out. He's not worth it. Forget about it. We don't have to impeach. Um, two years we've been listening to this argument about the wall. 
you are being played by both sides. They keep the argument going. The Democrats, they want a resolution uh, to stop this national emergency. Uh, I'm going to veto it. But you know what? <laughs> Trump's border agency says he has built zero walls in new places despite claiming otherwise. Yes. Yes. President Trump, he's come out and said that he has built. The, the, the wall is already being built. He lied through his teeth. President Trump has boasted that he has built both new and replacement walls, a claim that appears untrue according to Border Patrol. ICE drops dozens more migrants at Phoenix bus station. What? Um, I thought ICE was working with Trump you know, to stop illegal crossing of our border and oh, oh, so ICE, same old, same old. ICE was doing this during the Obama years. ICE is doing it during Trump years. Trump administration renews temporary amnesty for over 300,000 foreign nationals. All right, I'm not a fan of Ann Coulter, but this was sent to me by a subscriber. It is now clear that Trump isn't waiting for a better moment. Do you understand how many people who supported Trump are now posting articles saying Trump is just like Obama? How many people are saying you're being played? Those who supported him. Now people are coming out and saying, you know, he's, he's making a fool of us. He's just lying. The promises that he made during the campaign were just like those lofty promises that Obama made in every, the world, my God, the world was yay, yay, yay. Oh, when he came into office, it was yay. After he signed his third spending bill with no wall funding, which he claims to need, all sentient beings were forced to conclude that the president has no intention of ever doing anything we wanted on immigration. In fact, Trump is steadily moving in the precise opposite direction of what he promised. Illegal immigration is on track to hit the highest levels in more than a decade. And Trump has willfully decided to keep amnesty advocates, uh, Jared, Ivanka, uh, yeah, 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 all of these people. Um, for all his talk about immigration, did he ever consider hiring people who share his MAGA, Make America Great Again vision? No. Uh, but still, I get comments from people under my Trump videos. This excuse, it's not his fault. He's trying. Never has a president been under such attack. And I can't believe that you're attacking him too, Carol. Do you understand what you're watching? All of the attacks is a staged play. Mainstream media is involved. Do you understand that when, oh, we're attacking another country like Venezuela, everybody's on board. Everybody's on board. Democrats, Republicans, mainstream media reporters, all on board. It's, you, you really do have to understand the, the characteristics of the psychopath, of the pathological narcissist. And you also have to understand this dynamic that we have lived, I certainly have lived it my entire life, certainly after Kennedy and, and Johnson, Nixon, it's 
this dynamic has just become so now cemented. These two parties that don't represent the people pretend to represent the people. It's clear they don't. And then they attack one another. But look back, and I have posted videos on the history of the wall being used by both parties. Both parties have done this. Both. Democrats, Republicans. This has been going on probably before the Reagan years, but certainly from Reagan on. They bring up the wall like they bring up North Korea to get Americans fighting with one another. And you're not going to get that wall. And if you would just use common sense, understand Trump, okay, he, he understands full well eminent domain lawsuits. That happened during the Democrat years. We're going to build that wall. We're going to build that wall. No, that might have been during Bush's years. But what happened? Seven years in the court fighting because a lot of the land is owned by private owners. So you think that this wall is just going to, you're looking at a wall, even if this whole wall stuff was true, you're looking at that wall built years from now. Years. So think about all of the other issues that we're facing that is destroying this country, our lives. But everybody's focused on this friggin' wall. You've got yourself so whipped up in a delusion because it works for you to believe that this guy is actually supporting you when he is so not. So these excuses, I agree with Ann Coulter and boy would my former friends think that I have just lost it by saying I agree with Ann Coulter on this. Um, you're, it, it, these are all excuses that you're making to maintain what you want to believe. Number of miles of wall built on our southern border since Trump has been in office. Zero. Number of miles of fence, bullard, or garden trellises built along our 2,000 mile border since Trump has been president? 26. Number of times Trump has claimed on Twitter he's already building the wall. 16 by Coulter's count. Number of times Trump has complained on Twitter that Congress won't give him funds to build the wall that he says he's already building, at least 30 by her count. Number of executive orders ending the anchor baby scam, oh, that he has talked about a lot. Well, he's promised whenever an election is coming that he's going to end that anchor baby. Well, he can write an executive order and do that, and he hasn't. Number of executive orders issued by Trump rescinding Obama's unconstitutional amnesty for illegal alien dreamers? None. Number of illegal aliens whose presence has been excused by Trump? 11 to 50 million, depending on your belief in propaganda or facts. Number of extensions of the E-Verify system to prevent illegals from being hired? over Americans? Zip. Number of H-1B foreign workers in this country when Trump took office? One million. Number of H-1B foreign workers in this country today? One million. Number of asylum loopholes closed? Zero. Number of top-level administration jobs offered to members of the Koch Brothers Open Borders Network? Five. 
that I know of. Campaign promise that Trump made to end the carried interest loophole. And a lot of Republicans, finally we had a Republican who wasn't beholden to Wall Street. During the campaign, Trump said that this tax scam allowed hedge fund managers to get away with murder and vowed to eliminate it. Americans who hadn't voted for 30 years said, how do I register to vote? Number of carried interest loopholes eliminated? Zero. Number of Goldman Sachs employees put in top administration positions by President Trump? Seven. Or more than President Bush and Obama combined. For someone unable to fulfill the most basic of his immigration promises, Trump has been amazingly competent in accomplishing the things Wall Street wanted. But no one else did. Number of actions taken to defend the free speech rights of Trump's biggest supporters being deplatformed and censored, such as Milo, Gavin, uh, McInnes, uh, Laura, Lomer, Alex Jones, zero. Has he said anything about vaccines since he's been in office? No. And vaccines are killing children. And you guys who are awake, you're still supporting this guy. I'm sorry, but I... There's something very wrong there. Civilians killed as government air raids hit Syria's Idlib. Okay, uh, we're still fighting in Syria. Trump said, I'm pulling the troops out. Uh, ISIS has been defeated. Really? Well, this has been just in the last few weeks. CIA is turning refugee camps into eastern Syria into in eastern Syria into ISIS hotbeds. What? Okay, we all know that ISIS is our proxy army, uh, terrorist army. We know that we created and funded and supported and trained all of these ISIS members. We know that the CIA, I got a comment from somebody who said, Trump pulled the CIA out of Syria. Do you have any evidence of that? No, of course. So. You know, Trump supporters just throw in anything. And you know what? This is such unbelievably immature behavior. And I so would love people to grow up, but they're just not going to do it. CIA is conspiring with ISIS commanders in northern, northeastern Syria, supplying them with fake documents and then transferring them to Iraq, Israel, French, the Israeli, French, British special services, they all work together. Uh, U.S. manufacturing sector slowing as economy losses steam. U.S. manufacturing output fell for a second straight month in February and factory activity in New York State hit nearly a two-year low this month, offering further evidence of a sharp slowdown in economic growth earning um, early in this first quarter, and yet you still hear Trump and his supporters talking about how fabulous the economy is doing, while the global economy is slowing down, along with the U.S. economy that has been slowing down, but you're just going to believe whatever the hell you want to believe. The facade of Donald Trump as a populist candidate is quickly ending. His cabinet is loaded with think tank ghouls and banking elites, so this should come as little surprise, but there are still some analysts out there that are naively believing that Trump is playing 4D chess and that he is not the Pied Piper he now appears to be. What I see is a president that claimed during his campaign that he would drain the swamp of elites, then stacked his cabinet with some of the worst elites in Washington, D.C. Every time I have posed this question to the awake, the truthers, quote unquote, about Trump and your support of this guy, when I have asked them, how can you support a guy that has made such bold promises and come in and done the exact opposite? No one responds.
no one responds. They go off on those excuses. He's doing the best that he can. He had so many problems that he had to face when Obama came, when uh, Obama left office. Um, uh, you know, any excuse to just keep that lie going as truth in your head when it's so clear it's a lie. What I see is a president who argued against Fed stimulus measures and the fake stock market during his campaign and who now has attached himself to the stock market so completely that any crash will now be blamed on him no matter what the facts. What I see is a willing scapegoat, a president that is going to fail on purpose. A whole lot of people who supported him in the beginning have turned around. Brandon Smith. Yes. Now, I don't know if Brandon Smith actually supported him in the beginning, but have you not seen any of those articles? Oh, that's right. Those who uh, have a need to have a savior, they don't read those articles. They have to maintain their confirmation bias. His transportation secretary, prepping for the future of automated transportation. A major new policy document from the Department of Transportation, Automated Vehicles, Preparing for the Future of Transportation, Secretary Elaine Chow, advances infrastructure plans to serve the global supply chain. This 65-page tome should be carefully read and examined for clues about the future of transportation in America the phrase private sector appears 29 times, indicating the key role that private industry and public-private partnerships will play in our future. I have posted videos. He has appointed United Nations agents to continue rolling out Agenda 2030. And his latest Native leaders tell Congress how Trump trampled spiritually occupied landscape to carve up national monuments. Yes, the Trump administration's downsizing of two national monuments Wednesday in Utah, bare ears, uh, arguing that President Donald Trump and former Interior Secretary Ryan Zink acted illegally by conducting what at least one critic called a sham review process. To the Hopi people, the Bear, Bear's Ears National Monument is a spiritually occupied landscape. This land is a testament of Hopi stewarded, stewardship through thousands of years manifested by the footprints of ancient villages, sacred springs, migration routes, pilgrimage trails, and artifacts. Another person at this hearing, another woman, Deb Halland, who is uh, a congresswoman, stated, I can say the bones of my ancestors are buried in bear's ears. It's easy to get emotional about tribal land when your ancestors have lived there for generations, and it's only because of them that you're able to sit here today. I appreciate local tribes for coming so far to explain why this land is important. Yeah, Americans have a tendency to only care about money. And they, unfortunately, a lot of them will do whatever is necessary to get it. So the Interior Department's own Inspector General had found the review conducted by Zink to be unsatisfactory and Zink himself to be apparently unconcerned with whether the process was legal whether it was improperly influenced or whether it best protected public lands. Industry was given special consideration in this process and the voice of the American people was ignored. Okay, President Trump's unprecedented proclamation revoking Bears Ears and replacing it with two small monuments Units violates 
the Antiquities Act and exceeds the power delegated to the President by Congress. And what is it for? Mineral exploration and development. This is a man who cares about nothing. He does not care about the American people. He does not care about the native people. He does not care about anything. But Venezuela really should have opened everyone's eyes to who this man is. And yet, I'm still seeing rah-rah Trump. You should be ashamed of yourself at this point. Sorry. Unsubscribe. Clearly, I do not care about the numbers. All links are below.